What's good, NBA family? Today is Wednesday, October 4th. We are 20 days away from the NBA officially being upon us. We're 20 days away from having NBA regular season basketball every night on a nightly basis. We're almost there, y'all. Home stretch <laughs> for all those hoop junkies. The offseason is the hardest time of the year, man. But y'all know what it is, man. We're talking about the greatest player in NBA history to wear number 20. Now, when I was preparing this episode, y'all, I was split. I was really, really split between the person that this episode is about. If you clicked on this video, clicked on this thumbnail, you already see who it is, man. We're talking about Manu Ginobili. And I was split between Manu and Gary Payton. And I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm from the Bay Area, so I had a little bit of biases to maybe even go with GP. But at the end of the day, y'all, I had to take my biases out and look at what matters, right? And to me personally, what matters is winning. Winning is the most important thing. And when we look at their in, their individual careers, they have similar accolades, similar uh, stats. But what does what does one have over the other? Manu Ginobili is a four-time champion, and he's played in a really, really important role in, in those championship runs. GP, he has one ring, but he got it in 2006, which was the tail end of his career. And also, GP wasn't nearly as impactful as Manu was in those championship runs. Like, don't get me wrong, like, GP played an important role in helping other teams like he helped the Lakers get to the finals but then that's when the Lakers got popped by the, the the Detroit Pistons and lost in five games I believe um so GP played an important role but Manu played an important role and still was able to get the win done so that's what really for me personally the reason why I ended up going with Manu over GP and then also GP wore number two his rookie year Manu wore 20 his whole career but let's talk a little bit more about Manu, man. We're talking about the man who popularized the Eurostep in the NBA. He carved a lane for the for Europe, European and Argentine players to come into the NBA and, like, actually have a role. I know before Manu, like, the, the, the guys in the United States kind of looked at those overseas guys, those European guys, like, soft, like, weird. But Manu really change the I guess the the narrative around their names because Manu he was not soft he was a slasher he was getting to the hoop and I mean Manu also he has a lot of grassroots programs back home to be able to get players to the states here um, and be able to play basketball so he, he's not only you know done so much for the game and popularizing the Eurostep carving a lane for these European players and then also having these these, these grassroots uh, programs too so he's done so much for the game and then, I mean, stats, they don't really jump out at you. 13 points per game on 44% from the field and 36% from the three-point line. But I think, you know, what what got him here on this list and what, to, to me, makes him the best player to ever wear number 20 was the fact that Manu is the, the ultimate role player. He can play so many roles on your team. So, like, when, when he was on the Spurs, he can go from being a top scoring option whenever Tony Parker or Tim Duncan missed time. He can go from being the top or the number one scoring option to – Whenever Tim Duncan and um, Tony Parker do play, he's able to go back to being that ultimate role player, you know, catch and shoot, setting down, setting down screens, setting ball screens, doing all the little things that matter, diving on loose balls, playing great defense. Even older Manu, like 2017, when Manu got that block from behind on, on Harden or in summer 2004, when Manu torched <laughs> Team USA and the NBA players uh, in that 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, Greece. So it's like Manu has the ability to get it there. Like he has the ability to be the number one guy, but then he can also fit in a role and play in a role. I mean, he, the man's got his jersey number retired by the Spurs. So that's 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 another thing. I'm sure GP would have had his jersey retired by the Supersonics, but they ended up becoming Oklahoma City Thunder. And then also, man, another big thing that I like to talk about with Manu is the fact that, like, he made an attitude change, right? A lot of guys in the NBA have a hard time making attitude changes. When you come from being the guy, from being the number one option to where now you're a role player or now you're a bench player, a lot of guys have a hard time uh, accepting that and they have a hard time dealing with that mentally. Manu, man, he, I mean, at first he was tripping. At first, he was tripping. I've seen the documentary on the Spurs and Manu and that dynasty. And Greg Popovich said at first he was tripping, but then Greg Popovich was able to come to him and tell him like, "Yo, like you're best off the bench." And he ended up accepting that role and then thrived in that role and really, really excelled. And that's when the Spurs excelled when he was in that six man. But 
Y'all know what we do here, man. We talk about favorite memory when it comes to this player. And Manu Ginobili, I did get to see a good amount of Manu Ginobili uh, in my upbringing. But my favorite thing probably has nothing to do with basketball. It, he It's when he was on the court. But it was older Manu when he swatted a bat out of the air, y'all. Like, crazy. I, I might have to even put the video right here. It was in 2009. It was Halloween night. And the bat was flying around, and there's Mono Ginobili, and looking like a hockey goalie. Oh, Manu knocked it out of midair! <laughs> that led to a series of uh, vaccinations that he was going on to say was a very painful process. Because it's crazy. He literally swatted a bat out of the air. And you know how fast bats are? Like, so that's crazy to me, man. But it was because it was a bat in the, in the Spurs arena. So if you haven't seen the video, I'll play it. But... There was a bat in the Spurs arena, and then bro just swatted it out of the air. It was the craziest thing I ever seen. But <laughs> anyway, y'all, uh, there you have it. Number 20, Mono Ginobili, 20 days away. Let's see who's at number 19. But for now, we out of here, y'all. Make sure you subscribe to join the family. And uh, that's it. Peace.